So in this next video, I'm going to be talking about the top eight plugins that I think that every WordPress website should have, at least any new WordPress website. This is kind of like the foundation of the plugins that you should should install, right? And I'll just kind of go briefly over into each one of them. I'll kind of just talk about them as a whole first, and then I'll kind of show the ones that are more important that need a little bit more explaining. But most of them are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, they don't need too much uh, detail into them. All right, and so just to list all of them right now, I, I believe I have eight in the list right now. Yeah, I have eight installed, and this is just a new website. So on my actual website, I have much more than eight. Uh, but these are just the eight that I think that if you're just starting out, if you have a brand new website, that these are the eight that you should at least the bare minimum. All right, the first one being uh, Akismet, I guess that's how you would say it. Uh, and I'll talk more, like I mentioned before, I'll talk more about what each of them do. Uh, but very briefly, Agismet is, uh, it's like a comment management tool. And so you'll, you'll notice over time when you make more uh, entries, when you have more blog posts, that you'll get a lot of spam, a lot, a lot of spam. And so this plugin uh, really helps to reduce that amount of spam. The next one being Floating Social Bar, and I mentioned this in another video, but really what Floating Social Bar does, it allows you to have social sharing uh, functionality. But what I like about this is that it has a sticky social bar. So it's at the top of the header. Um, it's very clean, very elegant looking, and it just floats there. So it stays there at the top, and it kind of follows the user as they go along. And so that's good because it, you know, if, if a user is reading a very long post and, and they do want to eventually share it, uh, if they're halfway down the post, chances are they're not going to scroll all the way back up or scroll all the way down to actually click share. Right? So that's what's one thing that's good about it. Any social sharing uh, plugin will do. Uh, this is just one that I think that works well. Next one being iTheme Security. Um, and the one thing about WordPress websites is I feel as though uh, because a lot of people utilize WordPress websites that hackers and uh, people who you know really are up to no good uh, are able to somehow break into WordPress websites a little bit more often just because than other websites just because uh, kind of the structure is kind of very similar uh, among various WordPress websites because we all use the same software to build the website right so this iTheme security adds a bit more security to your actual website and it makes it a lot better in my opinion um, and there's a lot of uh, functions that you can actually, and there are a lot of settings that you can change within the iTheme security, and I might go over those very briefly. The next one being Jetpack by WordPress, and I think this is actually automatically installed with your new WordPress install. Um, you have to check that, but pretty much the Jetpack, it gives you a lot of the functionality that you would have with the WordPress.com uh, WordPress blog. So remember, we're having a self-hosted WordPress uh, website with WordPress.org, the same software that they use at WordPress.com, but we we lose a lot of that special functionality. And I'll, I'll talk a, a very briefly about this Jetpack plugin uh, as to why it's so useful, what what we can get out of this, right? The next one being uh, Mailchimp for WordPress Lite and any type of, I guess, email building uh, newsletter plugin will do. This one works well for me simply because. Um, it has two different options that I like. One is that it allows you to add a normal widget like you normally would see on a website, um, whether you can sign up for the newsletter or something like that. But it also has the ability, and it will automatically update your list for um, your MailChimp account. So you don't have to export and then import it. It will just do it automatically for you. But the second thing that it does that I like is that, uh, so you can imagine when a user adds a comment, right? If they're going to add a comment, chances are they might be fairly interested in signing up for your newsletter. So what, with this is you can add an extra check mark. So you can add an extra check mark and also on forms as well, contact forms, you can add it as well there. But especially in the comment section, so when a new user uh, adds a comment, right, they have to also enter in their email. And so since they're already doing that, there's an extra checkbox that says, would you like to sign up under our newsletter? Um, chances are they probably will. And so, it, uh, you know, it has that option for them. The next one being Ninja Forms, and I, I mentioned this one earlier as well, but this one is is not necessarily what we use to make our contact forms. What we use is something called Gravity Forms, uh, but the reason why I'm suggesting this is because Gravity Forms cost, I think, around, let's say, $39. Ninja Forms is free, uh, and I didn't mention before, but all these plugins are actually free, 
right? So Ninja Forms is free as well. Um, and yeah, like I mentioned before, it's good for contact uh, forms or any types of forms that you really need to add. W3 Total Cash, I did mention this in another video as well. Uh, the reason why, uh, or pretty much what it is, is a caching plugin. So you can think very simply of it increases the speed of your website. It allows you know certain files to not have to be loaded every single time a new user views your website, right? So some things are stored in this cache, um, and it just allows your website to be a little bit quicker. They, I believe, on your in your original WordPress install, if you did it through the cPanel or whatever you did it through, uh, w, uh, WP Supercache should have been installed. The reason why I'm using this one instead of that, they do the same thing, very similar functionality. The only thing different is that um, I use the content delivery network and that just speeds up the website even more. And so the content delivery network is good um, or well, the one that I use is Max CDN, and so W3 Total Cache is good because it provides a very very quick install. It's actually what the people at Max CDN uh, they tell you in instructions how to install their CDN service with the WordPress is to download this plugin. So that's why I figure, you know, chances are you're probably eventually going to get a CDN in the future. So might as well just stick to this W3 Total Cache plugin from the get go. Uh, the final one is WordPress SEO, and so what WordPress SEO does it kind of to a lot of people what they think is that this plugin is uh you know does the SEO for you so there's nothing that you have to do you just install it automatically it it does it takes care of the on-page SEO for you um, and that's not necessarily true uh, what it does do some things that are automatic is um, it creates these site maps for you it allows you to have Google authorship uh, fairly easy um, you know with just a couple clicks uh, it makes certain things easier but really what it is is on-page content analysis that's really the core of it where it'll tell you kind of the importance of it will tell you what you're missing on each page for, for example if you're trying to target some type of keyword it'll tell you which which you know are you having um, the keyword in the header are you having it uh, enough times within the content are you having it in the different heading tags are you having it this and that and so it's kind of just like that tap on the back that you know to just remind you that these things are there and that they are necessary to have right and so I guess this has already been fairly long of a video as it is so I probably won't talk about all of them here I'll, I'll make an individual video for some of the longer ones that I want to discuss uh, for example jetpack and this ninja forms I'll make a separate video for those but very quickly let's just talk about um, Akis met and the floating social bar right so let's just go into the settings of each of these so for the Akis met what, what it kind of does and I sorry if I'm saying it wrong I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it but the way that it works um, is it's all in the back end right so you just sign up for an API key Right, and it's free to use. They do say that there's different plans that you can sign up for depending on you know how big your website is. But you can think of it like a donation. Everything was a donation when you sign up. You you can just slide the bar to. Um, I don't want to give a donation at this time. And if you decide later you want to give a donation, I, I'm pretty sure you're allowed to do that. Uh, but yeah, you just sign up for a personal free account. Uh, you can always upgrade in the future, and it just does it for you. It'll take care of the comments. All, all that the, the only options really is um, silently discard the worst and most pervasive spam I, uh, so I never see it or always put the spam in the spam folder for review um, and it's up to you which one you want I just put it in the spam folder for review because uh, at the end of the day maybe one of these comments aren't spam, spam so I can you know kind of take a look at it and it, after 15 days they're de deleted automatically so it doesn't really matter right so I just have that option so very simple plug-in everything's in the back end floating social bar um, and I mentioned this before that's why kind of the settings are already here um, so you can add different um, whatever the social services that you want to add in Twitter Google Plus Facebook LinkedIn or Pinterest those are the only five that they have but in my opinion that's all you need right you don't need more than that simply because what they found in studies is that the more social services you add for example if you add now um, I guess what are the, some of the other ones I'm drawing a blank right now, but for example, Buffer or Reddit or, um, you know, a, a bunch of the other ones. I'm drawing a blank as of now, but if you, the more you add, the decrease, they found that it's a decrease in actual effectiveness, right? So the more you add, it doesn't necessarily mean that 
they'll find uh, the social service that they're looking for and they're more likely to share. Most likely, they'll just look at it too much. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll pass. All right, so that's why I keep it just these three. Sometimes I add Pinterest, sometimes I like LinkedIn. It depends. You know, LinkedIn works for certain websites. For some websites, it, it really wouldn't, right? If you can imagine if it's like a personal blog or something that's very funny, unprofessional, you know, it's more for entertainment value. Right, that LinkedIn probably wouldn't work that well. If it's a picture website or something, Pinterest would work amazingly in it, or even a blog. So that's why sometimes I put Pinterest in. A social bar label, you just say what it, it is. Um, show bar on single, so you show whether it's on posts, pages, um, and then the different custom uh, post types that you may have. This is specific for this theme in general. Then you can add in the username, so it will add a little at to you so it'll, 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 when people kind of like retweet it or share it um, it'll, it'll show that um, you can have a bunch of other options and you can just save that as well all right and um, I'll show you actually what it looks like in the future um, I think I theme security I'll make a separate video on that jetpack I'll make a separate video um, MailChimp yeah I actually will show you this when we actually set up the newsletter so I'll, I'll show you that in the future um, and like I said, Ninja Forms, uh, I'll show you in a second, right? Um, so yeah, for in, in regards for this video, that's all I'm going to show you right now. You'll see that all these plugins I describe in great detail in the future um, in other videos. But for now, I mean, I think that what's the best for you to do is just install all of them, right? Install all of them, and all of them are very, very simple to install. The only ones that may have some difficulty are these Ninja Forms. Um, and I'll, I'll show you exactly right after this in the next video. If you're on our actual course, you'll be able to see it. Um, and so it'll be the, the video right after this.